To the east of the starting area is Kaelid. You'll know when you find it, it's the place that looks like hell. Early game though, it holds some of the most useful content out there, especially when it comes to gaining runes to kickstart your new characters. Before we look at one of the best early game rune farming locations in this area, you need to know about Elder Dragon Grail if you don't know already. This absolute unit has over 80,000 health points, but is well worth defeating in order to collect one of the biggest paychecks of your Elden Ring career. Things you will need for Elder Dragon Grail. Bleed weapon of choice, gold pickled foul foot, golden scarab talisman. First up, the gold pickled foul foot is a consumable that boosts your rune gains by 30% for 3 minutes. We can get one the easy way or the hard way. Easy way is to head south of the first step, Site of Grace, onto the beach. You can save time and safely jump down Lethal Falls in Elden Ring, as long as you land near a jump pad like this. Then just dodge past the ambushing skeletons and pick up the free gold pickled foul foot and you're good to go. If you have already looted and used this free one, you should learn to craft your own. You should have already purchased a crafting kit from Calais in the first ruined church. If you haven't do that, this gives you access to the crafting menu. You will need the second missionary's cookbook. Every cookbook you find teaches you different crafting recipes and this one contains the gold pickled foul foot. You simply head to the Murkwater Cave in Limgrave. It comes right after the Bloody Finger Neregis NPC invasion. At the end of this short cave system, you'll have a very amusing encounter with an old legend of the series, the iconic NPC Patches himself. After you loot his chest, he'll initiate a boss fight, but then halfway through that he'll surrender. At this point you can forgive him, and then you can purchase the cookbook from him as a new merchant. I can't blame you for this, but if you have already killed him, don't worry he will have dropped a bell. Take that bell to the twin husk maidens at the round table hold and then you can access his shop like normal. Now we can craft an unlimited supply, we need to collect the three ingredients to do so. Collecting the rower fruit. This first ingredient is everywhere, I barely need to say this I'm sure. You collect these berries from shrubs growing all over Limgrave. There's a bunch of them right next to the first step, Site of Grace. And as with all the ingredients, you can rest at the Site of Grace to make them respawn after you've picked them. Collecting the four toed foul foot. This second ingredient drops quite frequently from the guillemot birds along Limgrave's various beaches. There's many different coastal areas you could go to, but an easy one can be found just down from the first step site of Grace. West from the coastal cave, you can just run down the beach sniping them with a bow as you go. They always drop feathers and often will drop the four toed foul feet as well. Collecting the gold fireflies. The third ingredient can be found near waters close to minor earth trees. Again, there's a few different spots to choose from. I'll show you an easy one in the Mistwood Forest. Just go from the Mistwood outskirts site of Grace, place a beacon around here, and then just run back and forth on your mount. There's a few bears, but you're running through so they shouldn't cause too much trouble. With these ingredients, plus the knowledge gained from the missionary's cookbook, you can now craft the gold pickled foul foot in the crafting menu. Whether you craft one or collect one from the beach or elsewhere, just make sure you have at least one before we use the teleporter. Next you will need a bleed weapon. South of Limgrave is the Weeping Peninsula. Cross the bridge and head down the south path towards Castle Morn and you'll encounter a broken wagon that fell to an ambush. Loot the chest to find the Morning Star, a bleed weapon that can be used by all the starting classes if you put it in two hands. Golden Scarab Talisman. I have some suggested items for the abandoned cave we're about to enter. Bring your favorite spirit ashes. I chose the jellyfish, but the wolves are good too. I highly recommend neutralizing boluses, preserving boluses, fire grease, and the lantern. If you don't have the lantern, bring the torch, but it will make things a little more difficult. To reach the Golden Scarab location, head on over to the Third Church of Marika in Eastern Limgrave. Head northeast into Kaelid. Follow the path from Rotview Balcony to the Smouldering Wall. This wall stretches across the map, it's easy to notice. Side note, if you don't have this map segment unlocked yet, the relevant map fragment can be found here. Follow the smouldering wall along the map until you reach this dark ravine and place a beacon right around here. Careful when you ride over to the ravine, try not to almost fall off and die for no reason like I did. What you want to do is notice the cave ledge on the opposite side. Line yourself up and leap across. Make sure to switch on your lantern now if you brought one. 
Assign it to your quick pouch, if you haven't already, for easy access, and then touch the abandoned cave Site of Grace. The first section is a pool of deadly scarlet rot. Make sure you avoid the geezers, because they'll most likely one-shot you. And remember to back step through the rot, it's the quickest way to move through it. Whatever you do, don't try rolling. If you do, you'll become covered in rot, and the status will keep on building up over time, even if you step out of the pool. Run through the rest of the cave, avoiding the enemies if you can. The preserving boluses cure rot, which is crucial in this cave, but you should save them for the boss if you can. The neutralizing boluses are a backup in case you get poisoned by the servants of rot who cast poison bolts. Two golden clean rot knights await you at the end of this cave system. I would suggest applying the fire grease because they're weak to fire. Summon your best or tankiest spirit ash and start focusing on the spear knight. Watch out for the impale attack, it's the most dangerous one, it can instantly cause a scarlet rot infection. One tip is, try and keep away from the cave entrance here, there's a shallow pool of scarlet rot to watch out for. Ideally, your spirit ash will take the aggro from the other sickle knight, since it starts further back and generally uses ranged attacks. Backstabs are also a viable option in this fight, but in my case I found it easier overall to beat down the spear knight as fast as possible before my spirit ash companion died, I could then have a 1v1 with the remaining knight. They both stagger quite easily, which is the main thing that allows this aggressive approach to work. If you defeat the Clean Rot Knights, you will gain the Golden Scarab Talisman, equip it to start gaining 20% more runes from the enemies you defeat. Now you're ready to take on Elder Dragon Grail. Teleport back to Limgrave, to the Third Church of Marika, which is east of the Mistwood. There is a secret teleporter, just north of the church, in the waters. Activation takes us north of Caled to Grail's Dragon Barrow. You'll arrive at the Bestial Sanctum, ride south to the Farum Great Bridge. Cross the bridge, through the dragon legs for some style points until you reach the minor Erd tree. Follow the path west and then south until you reach this location I've marked with a beacon. You won't miss her. She's the size of a small mountain. This elder dragon is intended to be defeated by killing the smaller dragons surrounding her. Each one you kill lowers her total health. The problem is the smaller dragons get buffed by her and hit insanely hard. And it's just not an ideal place for low level characters. This is why you should bring a bleed weapon Using it will inflict the hemorrhage status and deal damage based on a percentage of her max health. In this case that adds up to being around 13,000 damage a time. That being said, she is fairly resistant to the bleed status, but thankfully we have all the time in the world since her dragon followers don't enter this area by her left flank. I should point out something completely unplanned which happened during this run. You'll notice during the final phase this message pops up, someone in the group defeated the shard bearer. So in the multiplayer menu, you can enter in up to five group community passwords. And when a player, using the same password, defeats one of the final demigods, you get this alert, and an extra 5% rune income buff. I've been using the Seekers password and the Sun Bros password in case you were wondering. What that meant was, before I struck the final killing blow, I had the community password rune buff active, I had eaten the gold pickled foul foot, so I had the rune buff from that, and I had the passive Golden Scarab Talisman rune buff as well. Overall, I ended up with more than 120,000 runes from one kill, which is a lot of free levels, especially for early game builds. It's simply one of the best things you can do at the start. Now, while we're in this plentiful region, you should know about one of the more famous early game rune farming spots. And by farming spot, I mean a location where you can consistently get over 200,000 runes an hour easily. And the most important part is, you don't need to fight anything. And it's incredibly simple and low risk. If you remember, the portal takes you here to Grail's Dragon Barrow. Just south is the Farum Great Bridge site of grace. If we head southeast from there, across the other lower bridge, we reach Lens Rise site of grace. Once you're at that side of grace, you can start farming straight away. Just rest at the grace, ride along the path west until you spawn a magical boulder trap. As soon as it spawns, you double back, turning and running along the cliff edge so that it flies off to its death, and then head back to the grace to repeat the process. You'll be getting over 2,300 souls every 25 seconds or so. If you want, you can actually keep heading down along the path to spawn a second boulder. This can be more efficient, more runes per hour, and make sure to do your farming at night time as well, because at night, you have a chance of spawning golden glowing eye enemies, which drop five times the runes. And if you're lucky enough to get a golden boulder like this, it will drop 9,000 runes. 
Two more tips while you're doing this. Make sure you keep the boulder on screen when it falls off the cliff to ensure you get the rune drop. And you can also teleport back to the site of grace using the map. Depending on how fast your loading times are, depending on what console you're playing on of course, this can also be a faster, more efficient way of doing things. Okay, I think that sums up the early game rune acquisition. Just wanted to get some tips out there, hopefully they can help people. I am still sick, just in case you've been watching this video and wondering. The other thing I wanted to mention is I am working on the Elden Ring Top 10. There's just a lot of submissions, so it takes a little while to go through, but that is being worked on.